Hey everyone, so welcome to Orion Speechy and today we have a peculiar and a very interesting subject. So this is Shruti Satyan and I'm a medical speech language and swallowing pathologist and let's learn together. So today we are going to have a look at something that is out of your syllabus. That is advanced treatment methods that can be used in patients with dysphagia and how it's going to be in the future. So all this year in our BASLP time and even when I took MSc speech time, I have only learned compensatory rehabilitative techniques like Wallace modification techniques, head turn, head tilt and all the simple simple techniques that we can use to treat patients with dysphagia that is swallowing issues. But there is actually a lot more advanced stuff that have come out in the recent years like vital stim or CTAR, EMST. So have you heard of all these terms? Yeah, even I was also surprised and I was also new to all these things and recently I found a really good research paper, this one, that is advances in the treatment of dysphagia in neurological disorders, a review of current evidence and future consideration. This is a pretty good paper which you all should have a look at. I will attach the link to this paper in my description. So the first one is EMST. EMST is expiratory muscle strengthening training. It's a handheld device which is really small and you can blow into it. It can improve the strength of expiratory muscles and also your submental muscles. So in this device there is a one way spring loaded valve in which we can adjust the strength of resistance against blowing and this is mostly found effective in patients with Parkinson's disease and also post-stroke dysphagia. And this has also increased the airway protection and also UES that is upper esophageal sphincter function and this has served to be a really good reliable method. So this small handheld device is actually available in Indian markets and you can ask the patient to buy it for themselves and just incorporate this with your swallowing therapy too. And the next one is CTAR that is Chintec Against Resistant. So this was developed by Yoon et al in 2014 and it was developed as a continuation to Shaker's exercise. Sometimes it's not a Shaki's exercise so I don't know what it's exactly pronounced as. So Shaker's exercise is like lying on top of a bed and then look, lifting your head to look at your toes. So CTAR is really simple. You can use an inflatable rubber ball or a soft ball that can be kept between the chin and the sternum and you have to let your chin press against it and hold. This can actually strengthen the suprahyoid muscles which is seen to be much better than what we do during a shaker's exercise and this also helps in the muscle activation during these tasks. Now the third one is NMES that is Neuromuscular Electrical Stimulation. So this is like uh, attaching surface electrodes near the face and also the neck and this can provide electric stimuli to strengthen the muscles of swallowing. So when you're giving it in a low intensity, it is activating the sensory component and you can feel a tinkling sensation in the skin and if it's given in a higher intensity, it helps in the motor muscle contractions for swallowing. So NMES is a great option for people with post-stroke dysphagia, especially the ones who have poor laryngeal hyoid elevation and also poor swallow frequencies. Now the fourth one is a biofeedback technique that is known as SEMG, that is surface electromyography. Here what we do is placing surface electrode on the neck and also the submental muscles and this will monitor the swallowing muscle activities during different phases of swallowing and this can give feedback to the patient. This SEMG is available in vital stim also. Here these recorded signals will be transferred into a visual feedback or even an auditory prompt feedback. So the patient will understand the biomechanics of swallowing and then they can put an effort to improve the swallowing according to our, our instructions what we give. Another one is PES that is pharyngeal electrical stimulation. Here the electrodes will be housed through an intraluminous catheter into the pharyngeal mucosa and electrical stimuli will be delivered. So this study says that if you do PES neuromodulation treatment for around 10 minutes that can be equivalent to around 30 minutes of therapy to excite the cortical regions of swallowing system. So that's really good. 
Now, PES was a form of neuromodulation treatment that is involving the peripheral areas. Whereas you can also do it for a central uh, neuromodulation manner that is by using two ways. One is TDCS that is transcranial direct current stimulation and also RTMS that is repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. So both of these are like non-invasive uh, brain stimulation techniques and both of them work in different principles. So RTMS is more of an electromagnetic induction and it's giving up higher intensity currents. So what happens is there will be depolarization of the nerve cells and also it can trigger better action potentials. It may induce seizures but the risk is really low but the problem is it's really expensive. While TDCS is actually providing direct electric current through surface electrodes that is placed on the scalp and this is giving out lower intensity current so it's actually helping in improving the firing threshold of membrane polarization. But adverse effect can be like itching of the scalp and sometimes there is a small tingling sensation or headache that's it but it is actually cheaper than RTMS. Now both of these are NIBS that is non-invasive brain stimulation and both can help in altering the neuroplasticity and helping the patient swallow much much better and the treatment is more effective during the first 2-3 weeks of therapy. Now the final one is a bit crazy that is ROSE R -O -S -C, that is robotic soft esophagus. So this is actually esophageal stenting. It's mostly a treatment used for esophageal cancer where there are strictures and this can help in expanding the esophagus to take in normal oral nutrition. But these stents can actually become displaced over time due to extended esophageal peristalsis. So it's a... Uh, what all did we learn today? There was EMST, CTAR, NMES, then non-invasive brain stimulation techniques like RTMS or TDCS, then there was PES and finally there is ROSE. So I was also surprised reading this paper. It's by Sheng et al from 2022 and the study was done in Manchester. This is something right? Hope you actually liked today's subject and it was interesting to talk about too. So see you next time. Hope you loved it.